All right, great. Hello, hello, everybody. This is Elizabeth Claire Brewington, and I want to invite, uh, welcome each of you for joining our channel and watching this video. Uh, everything is available on our website, brightsideglobaltrade.org. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you click the bell and subscribe so you never miss a video. Uh, we, we are very excited because we've done 70 events now and uh, we're getting ready for our virtual conference, which is in February. We're going to do a conference every single month. So you're going to get tons of videos, tons of important things, and lots and lots of prizes and offers. So don't forget to subscribe. I'm very, very um, happy today to have with us in our studio um, Kevin. And Kevin's written a book um, that is dear to my heart. And I'll let you let him introduce us to his book and his story. And um, tell us about yourself and tell us about the book. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Kevin Kirksey. I, I live in Dallas, Texas, been happily married for 39 years. And um, life was great. And I ended up having a rather shocking and unusual medical journey um, where it, it was discovered on a whim, on a complete whim, that I was very near death due to some severe um, blockages that I had in my arteries in and around my heart. And the uh, fascinating thing was that I had zero symptoms, no warnings of any kind. Uh, I, I felt fantastic. And I guess it had it not been for a fateful question that I asked on the way out of a doctor's appointment, um, I probably would not be, be here today uh, speaking. So the name of the book is, I've titled it Life 2.0. And the subtitle is A Journey from Near Death to New Life. And um, I'm just uh, incredibly uh, delighted and happy that I, I did take the time uh, to write it. I had never, ever thought about writing a book in my life. It was not on my radar. Um, and so I, I, I go through this um, severe medical scare. Um, and as a result of some fairly profound uh, changes I made in my life physically, mentally, and spiritually, um, that's the real story here. The transformation is the real story. And so what I started noticing and what, what kind of inspired me to write the book, uh, I, I would hear stories about people who heard about my story or share people that knew me that shared my story and I started getting feedback that many of them were then running to their doctors to do the same test that actually I took that saved my life and so that was that was fairly rewarding to know that something that I endured caused others to go get themselves checked out uh, in many cases the uh, I, I got feedback that never, everything was fine there was no issue and I, I I've had some feedback where unfortunately uh, people discovered very much like I did that they were in a life-threatening emergency situation and had life-saving surgery um, and you know the, the beautiful part for me is these are people that I don't even know that I've never met and and just having the blessing and the gift uh, to have endured something that, that that helps another person with extended life is just, you know, the most amazing thing. And so I started thinking about that, and I started to do some speaking. I was speaking at healthcare organizations about, you know, my tremendous experience with what superb healthcare looks like. And I started seeing the reaction of healthcare providers, and, you know, one of deep gratitude, one of appreciation that I was in tune with all of the little things that make huge impacts in healthcare. And so now I've got, um, I, I, I seem like I'm helping people, uh, you know, extend their life in some cases. Uh, the, my message is resonating quite well with healthcare organizations. Um, and, and, and as I started looking at myself, uh, what occurred is I, I realized that I started living a life based upon their example. So, you know, I, I, it dawned on me that in the, in the hospital that I was at, you know, people were, you know, they put their lives on hold and they give and they give and they give 
and they don't ask for anything in return. And so um, I started thinking that, well, maybe perhaps I could live a life or should live a life based upon their example. What would it be like to live a life that is focused on others, strangers, not strangers, anybody and everybody focused on others versus what historically was focused on myself? So when I put all that together, I said, you know, I've got to write about this. I need to pass it down through my family. I want my family to know what I experienced. Well, I did that, and I had a very, very rough um, draft of what <laughs> in my book. A publisher picked it up and said, we would like to publish it. And so here I am. That's, that's the genesis of the inspiration behind it. What a story. I mean, what a great story. I want to introduce you to Elton, who just joined. Hi. And Hi, Elton. Elton is a uh, producer Kevin. and Kevin. publisher Kevin. and okay. managing Kevin. editor I'm, as I'm, well. I'm great. sorry, just joining you. But wow, what a story. It is a story. And, yeah. you know, and I, it, you have a lot of pieces to that that we really would like to delve into, uh, yeah. having to do with your service shift and having to do with, uh, uh, you know, as you put it, the silent alarm, no alarm, and mm -hmm. and how we can actually uh, yield results for people who are under this veil confidence that doesn't really exist. But so, you know, I mean, I mean, it's an amazing story. I, I mean, I, I'm 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 inspired by what you're you're suggesting, and uh, all across America, I'm sure there be people who would like to delve into that more. Specifically, share with us the, some, and uh, we're gonna share with us some of the details about the actual health concern. What was it? Uh, what did it relate to? Right. Well, I think to to share that, and thank you. It's a great question. I appreciate it. Um, I'd like to tell you the little story about how it was discovered that I had a problem. Um, okay. Uh, I really felt fantastic in life. I had no health issues, no concerns, no no warning signs of any. But I did go to the doctor once a year just for an annual checkup. Um, mm -hmm. And I was, I was at my primary care physician's office. He had spent his 15 minutes with me like they do with every other patient. <laughs> I, I, I was done with the appointment. Uh, I said, hey, I'll see you later. We, and I was walking toward the door and something stopped me. And I turned and I asked a question. And what came out of my mouth was a question I honestly had not been thinking about before. And I will tell you now, it's a question that later proved to save my life. Mm. And it's a question that also proved to me that divine intervention is very real. Mm -hmm. And the question was simply this, uh, you all can relate. I said, hey, doc, this guy was my doctor for the last 10 years. And I said, hey, doc, I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. I said, I feel great. And I feel fantastic. And I, I hope you don't think this is strange, but I'm just wondering, should, should we ever check anything on the inside of my body? Mm -hmm. He looks at me. He thinks for a minute and he says, yeah, I, I think you should go do a, a cardiac calcium scan. And, and mm -hmm. I go, okay, what is that? And he goes, well, it's a, it's a marker test for heart disease. And they, they, uh, you know, it's 10 minutes, they take pictures and off you go. And mm -hmm. so um, I said, okay. Uh, and I really wasn't that serious about it, but on the way out to my car, I, I walked past the, the imaging lab, which is where I think they did these. And I walked in there and I said, hey, is this where you do these scans? They asked me my name and I told them and they said, well, yes, it is. Um, I see your doctor has ordered one. We can take you right now. I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm busy. I got to get back to work. And so I ignored it. This was on a Friday. And she says to me, could you come back Monday morning, like at 830? I said, oh, sure. And I distinctly remember telling her sure, and I really had no intention of going. I was not that interested in it. Something told me over the weekend I should take that test. So I did, I took the test. Uh, it seemed like it was a lot longer than 10 minutes. And I'll explain that to you in a second. Mm -hmm. After the test, I go out to the airport, I get on a plane, I go to Northern California on business. I traveled a lot in, in my career. I'm in my first meeting, my cell phone rings, it's my doctor's office. I send it to voicemail thinking they're just calling to tell me the good results of the test. Right. Uh, called me again two minutes later, thought it was a mistake. So I sent it to voicemail. They called me two more times in the next five minutes. I thought somebody's trying to get a hold of me. Right. So I, I ended up calling back and I got the nurse on the phone and she says to me, Kevin, the test results weren't good. 
And I said, oh, what, what does that mean? She goes, well, it means it's the worst the doctor's ever seen. And I said, oh. I said, well, what, what does that mean? She says, it means that you are at an extreme risk of a cardiac event or a wow. stroke at any moment. And I'm immediately Whoa. thinking, I just heard my next step could be my last. And I'm 2,000 right, right. miles away from my home. So sure. I asked her what to do. She said, <laughs> she says to me, can you remain calm and come home immediately? We, you've right. got to get you in to see the cardiologist. So uh, the, 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 uh, the, the real scare about that, uh, Elton, is, is that I never did ask her what my score was. So I'm on the airplane. I'm looking at this particular test. And it says you can have a score that results from zero to 400. Zero is what you want. 400 is what you don't want. And on Dr. Google, I read this description at 400 that said probability does exist for extensive cardiac damage. Well, I thought that can't be me. I feel great. That's, I'm, I'm somewhere between zero and 400. So the next day on the way up to the cardiologist, I called my nurse and I said, what, what, by the way, what was my score? Well, it turns out I was right. I was not zero. I wasn't 400. I was 6,518. So Whoa. far off Whoa. the charts. And at Whoa. that point in time, I knew I was in trouble. So right. Right. Fast, fast forward, I ended up having uh, open heart cardiac bypass surgery. Uh, it was the open heart kind versus the, the, the really cool one with the robot, because apparently sure. where the blockages were, they had to, to open me up. And so that was the genesis of how I learned I was in trouble. Wow. wow. Oh, my God. That's I'm glad that you're here, so and I'm glad that you're doing this interview. Well, thank my you. Goodness. I'm glad I'm here, too. <laughs> yes, I know. So, so that significance is quite astounding, and yeah. that, you know, one, you were able to identify it on mere whim, on mm -hmm. mere whim, and not to suggest that your life, your life now has more meaning, I'm sure, yes. that, and the significance of it on mere whim to, to more and in, more in, incredible capacity. So I guess that defines for you, man, you know, so my life was given back. You mean, you got a second life. You got a second life. <laughs> That's what I call it, life 2.0. You got it. I got yeah, a second so life. Let me, let me transform everything that I'm doing and really evaluate things on a deeper, more profound level. God bless. So, astounding. Two the name of your book. So tell us what two point means and uh, what we can expect well, from the book. We yeah. haven't read the book yet, but we're we're getting that's a copy, so we're excited that's about okay. it. Yeah, we'll come back after. I'd 2. be happy 0. to describe to you what the essence of uh, what how I view life two point oh. And by the way, uh, it's a life that everybody can live. It's it's not particular to me, and you don't have to have open heart cardiac bypass surgery to sure. to, to understand what I'm the message that I'm sending. But I think it's important to share with you, it all started with a prayer that I said moments before I was being put under for surgery. Mm -hmm. I was at my life's heightened sense of vulnerability, fear, and anxiety. True. And they're wheeling me into the operating room. I'm looking around. I see people. I see lights. I don't know what's going on. I closed my eyes and said a prayer, and I'd like to share it with you. I said, sure. dear God come to terms with my mortality. My precious wife is not ready for my passing. And please take me today if it's your will to do so. But if I am to survive, I'd like your help with achieving a bucket list of the three most essential items in my life. One, I'd like to dance with my wife again. Number two, I'd like to hold hands with my wife and take a walk. And number three, I would like to meet and get to know my unborn grandchild. And okay. thank you, thank you for my life, and I give myself entirely and completely up to you. Okay. Well, the good news is I survived the surgery. I danced with my wife. I've held hands. We've taken that walk, and I have the most amazing grandson you would ever want to know. Good. And so God, God answered my prayer. And so I started mm -hmm. thinking, what can I do for you, God? What what can I do? Mm -hmm. um, and as I'm thinking through this, it occurs to me that my inspiration really occurred because so many medical people, effectively what they did is they affirmed my value, my relevance, and my importance. 
And so I said, you know, maybe that's what this is about. That's a form of love that we all can give. So maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe God wants me to do that in my life, spend my time and energy to affirm the value, relevance, and importance of others. I mean, all others, not great physicians, somebody I meet at a grocery store in some way, let them know they're important. I started doing that. And, and I, and I, by the way, just, just so you know, I have in my, what life 2.0 means to me in my calendar every day on my computer at 7 AM, it says live or die. It's a question mark. Make the choice. Every day I make that choice. If I, if I choose die, which I haven't, it means just keep doing what I was doing before surgery because I'm dying. If I choose live, if I choose live, it means eat right, take your medicines, exercise, uh, do something special for somebody before you go to bed at night, seven okay. days a week. And so okay. life 2.0 is more of an outbound expression of, of caring for others in appreciation because I was cared for and my life was saved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. That's wow. the essence of it. Wow. That's amazing. That really is. Well, I, I, I tell you, I'm impressed, Kevin. That's quite quite outstanding. Here's what we want to do here because I want to delve into this a little bit more. And sure. I'm excited about this because, you know, uh, we want to take a break here, uh, okay. about 30 seconds at yeah. station ID, and then we'll come back and we'll delve into prescriptionally, you know, the, thir the evaluation of what, you know, the two point value profile has represented and perhaps it might lead to other people thinking those things through. So, sure. uh, so sure. right here, Absolutely. we'll take a break and we'll come back. Absolutely. Meanwhile, for those watching, don't forget to look us up on brightsideglobaltrade.org and we will have that available in the comment section. If you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you subscribe, press the bell button, and uh, we hope to see you at our conferences. Uh, we will be listing them, but the one that we are hosting is in February the 25th, 26th, and 27th, which is a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and it's going to be full of speakers and authors and great inspiration for you during the pandemic. Uh, you can ask questions about how you feel, and so make sure that you log in and get your the first 100 tickets are free, and after that, there will be a charge. So head down to Eventbrite and get your tickets. Once again, all this information is brightsideglobaltrade.org. Okay. So we're just going to stop recording.